I don't know how to put this question, but does the relationship between the devotee and the sadhguru, does it change with time? Yes. How? It gets more and more strengthened. Any in, in relationship ch- changes. Everything in the, in, in the world changes. And as a part of it, it also changes. The change doesn't mean the other way around. It transforms. Transformation is also a change, isn't it? Strengthens. Yes. Oh. Oh. It becomes stronger and stronger. First, we come once in a year, just for a holiday. <laughs> and then after some time, that even if there is no holiday, we want to come. And later we want to stay longer, longer and longer, and taught completely. Is it not strengthening? spiritual life and worldly life are they separate or they are one if they are separate how to balance them in fact, there are no two lives. You live only one life. How to say whether it is spiritual or worldly is, it depends upon the object, the goal, the source from which you derive your fulfillment. If you derive, if you want to derive your fulfillment from an worldly object, you call it a worldly life. And if you want to derive the same happiness and fulfillment from the so-called spiritual source, then it's called a spiritual life. What is the difference between the two? Usually, normally, it, it is like this. Because either you have to choose between the two. They tell you, if you read any book on, uh, on spirituality and Vedanta, they say you have to choose between the two. So they have to choose worldly life or spiritual life. For them, you have, whether you are spiritual or worldly, you can't live both. Or if anybody wants to do it, they call it a different name, as if it is a compromise, a karma yoga, mm-hmm. and this kind of yogas. As if it is a compromise. You have to evolve to jnana yoga like slowly, <laughs> it's okay. First do karma yoga. <laughs> By saying that, they have feeling of a compromise. Oh, they are not up to that level. But what happens with Baba is, Baba never differentiated between the two. He picked up the real, whether it is worldly or spiritual. Why, what is the source, what is the basis of a man's endeavor? Why people strive? Whether it is a worldly striving or a spiritual striving, whatever it is, why people strive? It is the fulfillment, the happiness. So, usually our mind is, our sense of fulfillment, our concept of fulfillment is through worldly objects only. So if you tell them, no, no, this is not the fulfillment, they experience it is the fulfillment. They want money, they have a problem, and unless it is solved, they don't, they can't be happy. But if you say, that is all maya, even if you feel unhappy also, it is not real. <laughs> the real happiness lies somewhere there. <laughs> they may listen, they may, out of respect, they may say, okay, it's okay. <laughs> but they, it, it, it can't go into their heart, they can't, 
they can't understand it really. Then they see that it's not for them. It becomes too irrelevant and intangible. So, what Baba did was, as doing this, is, he first he wants to fulfill our desires by his power, by his tapasiddhi. And once by now we know that he is the source of the fulfillment, then slowly the shift goes from the actual object of the desire to the one that who gives that object. So our one, there are various different kinds of objects through which we wish to derive our happiness. And when there is one source which could give all these things, then our mind starts focusing more and more on it. And slowly, as the love towards him develops, then the pull towards these objects, they got weaker. And then what the pull towards Baba only remains. Because there is no insecurity. If we ask him, he will give. But we don't feel like asking. We don't have, we don't derive any more uh, pleasure or happiness through it. So we don't care about it. Not that they are bad. Not that they are worldly. Not that they are maya or illusion or delusion and so on. Simply because we don't like, we don't feel like Ah, we are experiencing it, we don't want it. Then that, the pull, <coughs> the strings are released. Then where we land is, we land at the feet of Baba. <laughs> that making us understand that He can give. First we, we try our own place, try. But once we realize that we can't try and we can't get it, and then we experience that He is giving you. Then we start depending upon, looking, looking towards Him more and more. And then He becomes the focus, the, the focal point of all our thoughts. That is what, in spite of all the lectures, the satsangs, the, read, the readings, that you have to concentrate on, on Insta, on your Sadhguru, on God, people can't do it. But here it becomes natural. It may take time, but at least after some time it happens, and it is happening. That's what we all see, how it is happening, how naturally it is unfolding. Not denying the world. Where you are, you start. And he takes care of it. He knows what to give you. So there is no wrong in expecting a wish to get fulfilled, like material things, till we reach that stage where we can totally... Whether we don't reach it also, what is the problem? That is his problem, not our problem. So we don't have to feel uh, guilty. Well, nothing, nothing. <laughs> no guilty at all. That guiltiness is the result of the, uh, the so-called spiritual tradition, which says this is all maya, this is all bad, this is evil. If you go to some people and want, I want to know something about spiritual, first leave the world and come to me. <laughs> if you could leave the world, there is no need for the upadesa at all. <laughs> It's very usually that I, I, uh, I tell the example of Ravana Maharshi. Mm -hmm. One day, oh, one lady came to um, uh, Bhagavan and she sat in front of him and listened to some of his words and she got very much thrilled and then she said, Bhagavan, I have come to ask you for uh, jnana, for mukti and if you give me mukti, I, I don't want anything. I only come mukti. I don't want anything else. I don't have any desires at all. I'm coming for you only for mukti, and if you give me, I will try feel blessed. So Bhagavan said, sorry, sorry. And again she asked. And again he simply nodded. He said, simply, okay. And then that lady left. Her duty is over, and she left. 
<laughs> and as he left the hall, and he started laughing like anything, holding his belly and almost rolling on his sofa. <laughs> That's an control. He was controlling himself. When this lady, this lady leaves the room, and so that he could laugh heartily. <laughs> and as soon as he left, he started rolling on the sofa. And then all the devotees around him asked. Why, why, why are you laughing like that? No, no, no. Just listening to her, uh, what she asked, uh, I felt like laughing. What is wrong in it? We are all of the comfort that home. <laughs> if the is such a laughable thing? No, no, not that. If anybody experiences that they don't want anything, they don't have any desires, what remains is mukti. What is that I am going to give them? <laughs> so, it is such a paradox, that word. I don't want anything, only mukti. That is meaning. If you have that state of I don't want anything, that is mukti. And people are not ready for that. And there Baba comes. It is why even such a, almost you can say, a, an embodiment of renunciation and vairagya like vayamana. Actually, these words we can't expect from the, from the mouth of. Uh, Vemana. But he said, Ihamu Lezu, Parame Garadanu Vadi Mata Kala Mata. A saint, by Vemana, a great yogi, he said, If anybody says there is nothing in the world, this is all bad, give it up. And only there is a para is there. But he is lying, he is telling you false things, he is deceiving you. Don't believe him. Ihamu Lona Paramu Supa Garavadi. That a Sadguru, the one that who can show you that para, the so-called the, the spirit here in the world, he is a Sadguru. And as far as I know, Baba is a Sadguru. He is a He never asked you to eschew, to give up, to renounce, thinking that it is all bad, it is all worth. Even though he lived a life of a sannyasi, a fakir, but he never advised, he never told anybody. And he is always, he has been showing us the so-called the spiritual in here, in the world. And he fulfills perfectly the definition of the Sadguru which Vyamana has given. Either it is due to be not able to understand properly the tradition, the Vedantic tradition, or the incapacity to fulfill, take care of the people's worldly wishes, that people start saying, this is all right, no, well, don't ask anything, don't ask any worldly desire. I, everything is fate, everything is destiny. What is going to happen will happen. This is all your karma, your paradha. And if anything bad happens, it is also good for you. <laughs> <laughs> your paradha is gone, these kinds of things. This is not here in Baba's tradition. His tradition is different. He has the power, he has the capacity to fulfill and take care whether it is a small and pretty worldly thing, or it is a so-called very big thing like mukti. Both he can handle. In one finger, with one finger he can handle. <laughs> what else? First two, second to third, <laughs> there is nothing like that. My first experience is when I look at him always, even when I was a boy, that somehow that I, feel, I felt attracted to him. A sense of belongingness was there, that was my first experience. I didn't know even his name, what he is. I think 
When I was a boy, there was a photo in our house. And I used to ask my grandmother, because then all the gods and goddesses, they have these crowns and jewels, and some human, some animals, uh, faces, different kind of gods and goddesses are there. But he looks different, he looks so human. Like any ordinary person, he's the only one among all this, the whole the pantheon, that he, he used to be like that. So I used to ask, who is he? She also didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> she said, he's a big Shivabhaksa. <laughs> then what is he doing? In, the, in that photo, is a painting, there was a hill painted around. There was a small uh, um, uh, a horse and a hill, a mountain. And still, I think those, those paintings were available to see the old houses. He is doing uh, tapas in Himalayas. <laughs> on whom he is doing tapas? Because what we do know about tapas is only from the movies. In those movies in Bhukailas and these movies that they used to do tapas on Shiva. <laughs> so on whom that he is doing tapas? On Shiva. Spontaneously she used to give answers. She never uh, used to say that I don't know. <laughs> because because she, was, she, said she was a teacher, she knows how to give such answers. <laughs> Ready made answers. Shiva Bhakta, living in Himalayas. <laughs> she didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about it. But somehow that I had a feeling. Whenever I, I entered that, uh, that state, but I, I used to more and more look at him. Somehow, if I, I, he's a likable chap. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I like him. He looks so tangible, so human, with whom that I could easily relate to. The other figures are so strange. That was my first experience. And that was my first knowledge also. <laughs> of Baba. Not that somebody told me about Baba, his greatness, his Mahima, and so that I got attracted to him. Without any knowledge about him, I got attracted to him. How did you find out more about Baba? Yeah, I never even tried to find out. Later in our in my college days, when I happened to meet my, my guru, he happened to be a Sai Baba devotee, and then he told me. Then it was easy for me to relate. Because I could not relate to any other gods and goddesses easily. And even now I can't connect. And I wanted to know something and I read and read and read. But I, I didn't see any any tangible answer to say, this is Brahma, this is beyond walk, beyond speech, beyond mind. It cannot be burned, it cannot be that, it cannot be this. It is indescribable. If you say it is indescribable, ineffable, the mind can't go there, your speech can't describe it, why do you try to describe? Again. Why do you think about it? It is something, whether it is inhuman, superhuman, or whatever it is, I am human. I have misery. I have something like me, I want something. I want to experience it here with my mind. The so called mind, which that mind which is experiencing misery, that mind needs a solution. Not that if you lose it, the whole thing, that you will get the solution. I have a disease. I want to be cured. <laughs> if you die, nothing will happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, there will be no body, no health, no question of disease. Everything is all right. <laughs> I don't want that solution. And it felt, I mean, that is not true, that it felt in those days when I was a boy that it was that kind of answer. It feels as if operation success, patient died. <laughs> when the moment you get mukti, I try for mukti because I have misery, I have dukkha. 
and the moment i try i do tapas and i do all the spiritual endeavors your mind is not there your mind is gone then what are you going to get it and what is guarantee that you got a solution to the problem of your mind when you are that you and that mind is not the the one that is experiencing that bliss because the moment you are trying that experience that mind is not there amanaskar <laughs> so operation success but this patient died as soon as actually my treatment has started i don't want that i used to think like that so about 16 17 years old boy those days my thoughts and so so with bhava that that kind of a tangibility has come even though that i didn't know that when i started reading about him knowing more and more about him he is like me and it seems he is someone someone that who has got answers in a human plane humanly it is possible because till then i i didn't know anything about saints only vedanta upanishads only these scriptures and these scriptures only talk about either the atma or paramatma or the gods and goddesses they seem so beyond they are not human but my problem is human i want somebody who has solved the problem humanly with whom that i can relate myself it should look more relevant and dear baba okay that was my first experience with baba if you call it an experience yes can tell you he said then he, he only knew about the scriptures and the gods he didn't know about saints yes i didn't know and then how did you start knowing about the saints when i started putting all these questions and started discussing with my master then the first thing he did was no no now we'll stop discussing just read this book and then he gave the self realization by being as in the soul of the life of ravana master that was the first life of a saint i read then he ramana look even more human more tangible even even baba seemed somewhat the material somewhat beyond our reach but ramana maharshi seemed very tangible very reasonable <laughs> so i could easily connect with him mm-hmm. so if he can get it why can't i get it I don't know why it attracted to me at that time. Okay. What I described was what I felt about 35 years ago. I do not know. No. Maybe this has been this may be filtered also. In those days, that is how that happened. It seemed that that was the thing that attracted me. Because there is no other reason. Because I didn't know anything about him. If I know he was a powerful man, at least okay, the power attracted him. or he was like a very handsome figure like in those days in my in those days when i was watching movies those movie stars no <laughs> in what way that he could be able to attract me i think it is the only the humanness but then we you just spoke about bhagwan as being so even more human more approachable more reasonable and so on how how come baba remains with you as the The, the strongest core rather than somehow finding bhagavan as the as uh, the one you were more attached to in the end and why why did the a switch not occur there for you i don't know i don't know but it seems that i i i could be like him mm-hmm. but he is the one who can make me like that 
I'm not saying that it's not actually happening. Mm -hmm. It was what? The feeling. Mm -hmm. There is two things. that One is a goal, but the one that who takes us to the goal. Mm -hmm. He looks like a degree, but he's the teacher who teaches me to get the degree. Mm -hmm. It is the goal and there is the means. It's not that somewhat that I, I am basing on what he is and what is that. It's not a question of discussion. It's a feeling. It could be otherwise around also. I'm not saying that some, someone is uh, greater and someone is less. No, it's not the intention of my saying. That is what I felt. For you, Baba always felt like the mean. Yes, he's the mean. And the goal here? And what was the goal? I think a goal and the end is a lot of other tillions and the art the court in the court at the era. You know, till you do not know what it is, something is lacking. You want to get something, even though tangible, you do not know what it is. Everything is there. If you think, yes, we have everything, but still, there is something lacking. It makes me miserable. Very frustrated, dry, drab, almost restless, and I do not know why this restlessness is coming. <coughs> and I was so restless and felt so dry. I think that that was the only description that I could give. Dry. I felt so dryness. Even in those two days, if you see my photo also, even now I can also see the dryness. And that was intolerable, almost a torture. And there is no reasons for that. We do not know why it is, how it it will go because if we know why it is coming, then we can think of how it can go also. I didn't have an idea why it is there. By getting what the restlessness will go, but also I didn't know. But the only thing that I could think of is when I think of Baba, the restlessness is coming down a little bit. Why it is coming down, that also I didn't know. What is the relationship between this restlessness? And Baba, that also we didn't know. So, more and more I used to think about. That, did that sense of Baba being the means in that experience you just described? It was the experience. <coughs> that's all. That was how that I felt. We did not know why it is, but it is. It was like that. So, as long as that it was like that, it was the thing that it started giving me happiness. Not that because I'm not, I'm able to get happiness that I started think, meditating on Baba. If I don't think of him, I felt restless. Mm -hmm. So it was almost imperative. Mm -hmm. There is no other go for me. So more and more, more and more. <coughs> yeah. I told you, a sense of relevance, a sense of tangibility, a sense of humanness that which can be, can be reachable, easily reachable. That is why if anybody asks me how to meditate on Baba, why go, I don't have the habit of giving Upadesa to anybody. Baba has been given, I do not know any Upadesa. If anybody comes and asks me how to meditate, how to do japa, how to do puja, I don't know. <laughs> because that problem was not there for me. But all the problem was there, how more and more, in what more ways that I could be able to think, think of, keep my 
Right. Actually, the problem was how to keep it away from him. Because it was not possible. The student, I had to study, and what I am doing should not be known to the elders. Because we have to do it stealthily. Because they have scolded us. They are all fortunate. In fact, some most of the boys here now, they have the full support of the parents. They are coming with their parents. But our our life was different. We used to do it stealthily. hiding and so much of resistance from the environment so the only thing i i tell you is when you say how to do sadhana how to meditate the only way is to ignite that love If once that love is there, you nat- what you get is the natural meditation. If that love is not there, whatever you do, you can't, you can't meditate. And if you want techniques, thousands of books out, out there, you can read and learn. There are so many people who can give you beautiful techniques of meditation and yoga. I do not know all those. What is the use of techniques? Is it the lack of techniques that we are not able to meditate? It is that what we want. It should cater to your needs. It should be your need. Meditation should be your need, your necessity. When you have a need, nobody needs to tell you, you think about it. You immediately you start trying to get, think about it, get obsessed with it and try to get a a solution for it. And it should become that need. And how to make it the need? The love. How the love is triggered? As just now the, from the, the first question of our satsang, the contact. Knowing more and more of it. That is the only way. As I told you, in many examples, just like, you, we are all like some pieces of iron and Baba is the magnet. Outside, from an outside view, they are both the same. If you take a magnet, you know magnet? And a piece of iron. See, both look the same, and it, but it is different. We call it a magnet, it has power, the magnetic power. It is a piece of iron, it doesn't have any power. But in constitution, by nature, both are iron. They look alike. He's also human. He looks like it. But what makes a magnet a magnet <coughs> and what makes an iron an iron? In the iron, the different molecules are in a state of disorder. Every molecule has its magnetic power, and this molecule has the power, but they are not polarized. So, this molecule's magnetic power is antidoted by this molecule's magnetic power. So, basically, nothing is coming out, even though magnetic power is there inside. So, how to make this piece of iron another magnet? That is what happening to us. Also. We have so many desires, so many pulls. And each pull is in clash with something else. There are so many pulls. We want to fulfill them all, but they are an opposed to each other, to one another. We want to come to Tirunamalai, and, and so something tells us, I don't want to come to Tirunamalai. We want to stay a few more days, no, no, I don't want to stay some more days. Always a clash. This clash makes you a piece of iron. But how to resolve this clash? How to make a piece of iron a magnet? By rubbing the piece of iron on the magnet. 
after some time what 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 is happening there is the number of molecules changed in the piece of iron or does it change its color nothing what happens is all the molecules all the things they get polarized they get harder once they get harder it becomes magnetic what makes it is the same philosophy there is the goal there is the theory and there is the practice also how to make it being in constant touch with whatever the magnet that you think baba is our magnet try to be with us mentally and if possible physically the close proximity the touch nothing nothing che and you, you don't lose any any of your desires the clash is only resolved that's all so the, the pulls are there and everything is there and they get fulfilled only they become harder they become harmonized the entropy has gone that is the basis of sadhana and great saints like ravana maharshi that is what they actually they told actually uh, beautifully ravana maharshi actually called it a mountain of ma- uh, a magnet a magnetic mountain and he was attracted to it a piece of iron and transformed it into another <coughs> magnet so much so that once he came he never left the place that was his magnet and he stuck to the magnet like a piece of iron and even after he became a magnet himself he never left that was even a great saint a siddha like ravana maharshi himself shown it in his practice and what about us he, he, he needed it that to be always at the feet of his object was it needed for baba to be at his guru's too this is my guru's place i want to be here they showed us your guru is the magnet baba is our magnet baba is our guru and we are all pieces of iron and let us try to rub our actions our <coughs> thoughts our physical actions everything that we have and try to rub on the tide and we become that hmm? you follow it is a process of a progression huh? i mean when your analogy of uh, rubbing against the piece of iron progressively huh? the iron <coughs> becomes more of a magnet it seems uh, that the one who is a magnet is also very much a magnetic personality is it, is that also a progressive thing that one becomes more of a magnet i think if it is a magnet and you are a piece of iron that we know that is no doubt about it <laughs> <laughs> so if it is a magnet it gets attracted to that stuff if it is not magnet it won't so that is why that i told you which is what is your guru is not because of any other criteria where your mind is naturally attracted to some it is pulled towards that form just as i told you in my own case of baba i do not know anything not any reasons not that he gave very good lectures and is a scholar actually in those days when i was young unless you have been a scholar like that i would have not been attracted but nothing something that you feel that a sense of security a sense of bliss a sense of happiness and your mind is automatically goes towards him again and again that the best world that i could get how the first place that we can relate to our guru is a familiar stranger we do not know anything about him but he is so familiar 
we know him so much, so intimate he is. But at the same time, it looks so an enigma. We not know anything about it. That strangeness is something makes us a mystery and attracts. And this, uh, this intimate, the sense of intimacy, the, the familiarity breeds love. It is familiar, it is strange. It is strangely familiar, it is familiarly strange. <laughs> it is strange, both. And with whom that you experience this, that familiarity, where that you feel at ease, that sense of security, and at the same time, the sense of mystery. So the sense of, the, the sense of mystery makes you think about him, to more, more, to more, to know more, more about him. Think even 20 years, Baba is still a mystery, an enigma. We know him, we do not know him. That with whom that you get at the first instance itself. The moment you hear about him, or you look at him, or you even to look at his picture, that you get that that uh, that feeling. Yeah, I know him. Ah, what is what about him? Uh, I do not know about him. <laughs> <laughs> you feel so familiar at the same time so strange. And we love it. We love that experience. That is the sign of mag the magnet there. You are magnet there. Maybe in the analogy only there is only an iron and a, a magnet. But here there are different kinds, the human pieces are different kinds of irons and different kinds of magnet. We have to we have to know what our magnet is. And the sense of mystery is always there, it never goes. Does it we'll see, we'll try to solve it. <laughs> Maybe it goes. Maybe it doesn't go, but that itself gives a thrill. Not that that, that mystery is uh, something painful. It is more thrilling. That is why that people enjoy thrillers, <laughs> a mystery movies, mystery novels. <laughs> why? It is so enjoyable. You rubbing against the magnet and energy low. On the side, proactive, we should uh, try to involve ourselves more and more and more in Baba activities. That is, Jayavala Siddhanta Nindhyasthan and Baba Jatinda and Gilgin Tevana, Viruddhuma and Baba and all that. Why did you clash across this one? I don't know if you're doing this, but I don't know if you're doing this. I don't know if you're doing this. I don't know if you're doing this, I don't know if you're doing this. आयन गुरिंचे यास प्राणों लाऊंगे तो अजी साधना ये तो का साधना ये तो को योगों दिन नंते ये रखेंगे चियाला don't think of in those lines that this is a साधना an endeavour we have to do an effort when we come to throw down ले we have to do all साधना always focused always serious it's not like that just as if like if you go to a movie and how you enjoy it Full constant. If anybody will be in the next seat, if you disturb him. <laughs> <laughs> not that there is a rule that one should, one should not disturb anybody and you should not be disturbed. That simply you can't. Before you are still too much focused. It should be like that. Enjoy it like that. Whatever the way. See that your mind is focused on that. On Baba, Baba, Baba. Whatever ways. If you start doing in one way, then suddenly it gets bored. You get immunized. Then take another thing and do it. Whatever you do, as long as it is on Baba, it is sadhana. And you explore one thousand ways, ten thousand ways, million ways, ten million ways. And if I tell you two or three techniques, it is only confined to two, three techniques. But now what I am telling you is umpteen millions and millions of techniques you yourself can evolve and adapt, create and you are the author of your own techniques. Hmm. 
Jadi seperti ini, apa beda rasanya? Mana kemana jelas kalau sini ada ayam tu berbeda dengan ni kalau. Bawa berbeda dengan ni mana kecuali ni, mana dah nampak dasar jelas kalau ni. Di atas pun gaya nanda deep is there. Whatever the reasons why Baba lit the Nandri for us, because Baba lit it, it is sacred to us. That's all. Anything connected to Baba, we like. This adorable person we worship it. We relate to it. Whatever the significance of its own, whatever it is. Because he called it Nandri. We also call it another deep. Otherwise, it is high deep for us. Can't I? What else? Sir, Sagana Rasa, Badiyaran Lo Paddamul Lo Bahi Kavu Chhe Chhinamul Janta Pro. Out on his satsanga alone. All this activity that we do is the long hand. It moves quickly, you see it more, but you don't see the movement of the short hand. And when it is moving, you always say, Why there is no experience? Why there is no change? It's, it's not so conspicuous. But at a certain time, suddenly, if, if, if you see the clock, you see the dirt. So short hand is also in some other figure. But you don't observe the moment. But this you can easily observe. That is what I said. But what by what that we actually the time is designated is by the short hand. Because the long hand moves and moves and moves. But this is more significant, but it is not visible. The transformation, the inner transformation is like that. These satsangs, these bhajans, these activities, this long hand, short hand, satsangs, <laughs> all these are like that long hand moving. But in order to make that short hand move, the long hand also has to move. <laughs> because that is, that is what it moves. I don't believe this, this satsang will make you enlightened and uh, <laughs> you will give knowledge with my lectures and this and that thing. Just as an opportunity to sit with you for some time. That's all. What we speak now, the content, I don't think it is very important because I don't believe in lectures, in verbal teaching. And ver <coughs> If it is so good, Baba would have taught, given lectures, moving around the whole world. <laughs> what he didn't do, why should I do? That is why I also don't lecture and I don't do satsang. This is not a satsang. To me, it is not a satsang. Just sitting together for some time. Because we have to talk something, we'll talk about this matter. <laughs> <laughs> because what Baba does, he does it not by any verbal teachings. This way is different. He gives. He never says, I'll give you. Do this and do that. Don't do that. If you do that, I won't give you. If you do this, I will give you. Nothing like that. He knows how to give. That is what my experience. This is all just a, a, a pretext for all of us to sit together. It's just like that, all the other things. Whatever you feel like, which can express your love, do it. That is sadhana, that is bhakti, that is yoga. <coughs> that is seva, whatever you call it. How to relate ourselves to it, how to express our love and experience the love. The more and more you express, the more and more you experience it. So the expression is needed. To some people it feels, why should we express our love? If the love is in our heart, is it needed? Is it not enough? They say it, but will they do it in all the respects like that? When they go, when the Baba's photo is there, then 
like this, they'll say. They, they need not say, why should we show? <laughs> oh, my respect is there in my heart. I, my bhakti is there in my heart. Why should I show? But when they, the moment they go to their house, they take their children and kiss. Is it necessary? <laughs> <laughs> and on a, on a birthday, you give clothes and you give ties. And for no one, then you see, and then you just, uh, uh, just fondle his hair. It's not needed. If your love is there for your child, is it there? Always. Why should you show? <laughs> but there we have to show. Only with Baba we need not show. <laughs> it's also just like the more and more that you show your love, it expresses. This is only our ego, our false ego, good for nothing ego, <laughs> that gives this kind of uh, definition. Oh, why should we shield? show this? It's a show business. But we can have all the show business with other things. I'm not asking you to make a show business, but don't resist in your own way. Not to show it to somebody else. When we show our love to the child, not because other people will recognize it. Just like we treat the child, show your love to Baba also. Not a demonstration to others, because you love it, you like it, you enjoy it. The more and then more express, ex, may express it, the experience is more. The more the experience, the more the expression, and it goes on. వాడి సంగతి పూర్తిగా నీకు తెలుసు దీని సంగతి నీకు పూర్తిగా తెలియదు కాబట్టి తెలుసుకోవడానికి ప్రయత్నం చేస్తాను కరెక్టే కదా దాంట్లో ఇంప్యూరిటీ ఏముంది ఎక్కువ ప్రేమ తక్కువ ప్రేమ అన్నమిటెడ్గా అన్లిమిటెడ్ ప్రేమ ప్యూర్ లవ్ ఇంప్యూర్ లవ్ అనుకు తల్లిదండ్రి ప్రేమ ఇంప్యూర్ లవ్ కాదు అది లిమిటెడ్ లిమిటెడ్ టు యువర్ ఓన్ దేర్ ఓన్ చిల్డ్రన్ దర్ ఇస్ నథింగ్ రాంగ్ ఇన్ ఇట్ బట్ ఇట్ ఇస్ నాట్ ఇంప్యూర్ But it is only confined, it is only limited. And whereas Baba's love is unbounded, unconditional, unlimited. That is the, the, the only difference. The love of the Sadhguru, the love of But there is no pure or impure love. Hmm. about fast and slow and I wasn't clear what the question is but were you saying that there is no such thing as fast and slow in transformation is because fast and slow are so relative are they relative to what if there is such a thing as fast and slow yes always we we refer to this fast and slow having a reference point and there is no need for such a reference point always we should be our own reference point and if you want to have any reference point keep 
some of the things how you were one year ago, how you were ten years ago, how you are now, make these reference points, whether it is slow or fast. And if you want really fast, do you really want fast? Actually, it is not. The thing. <laughs> People simply say that it is not fast, they complain. But if I really make it faster, they don't like it. <laughs> they want to be like this. But because we have to complain, if I can say the show, yeah. oh, it's not fast. It's not. So how long it will take? Only five years, only ten years. He is asking every time we see Baba's photo, what to do Namaskar. When you are constantly, what is the solution to avoid that is? Always doing Namaskar to Baba. Is. If you perpetually, even if Baba's, you don't see Baba's photo also, if you do Namaskar in the heart, there is no need. So, always be in a perpetual state of Namaskar. Only that person doesn't need to do this, the outward expression. Otherwise, you have to do it. I do it. There's nothing wrong in it. When you see a boss in the office, when you go this side and when he comes it, most of We don't feel ashamed to do that. Only with Baba that we have that problem. No, I will do it. More and more I will see. See that I will keep Baba's photo everywhere. Hundred photos in a hundred places in my house. So that that makes me do namaskar at every step. Do it like that. That's what another thing which I usually observe in the satsangs is many people they do a small mistake. Many people do, not all. They had think of prestige, self respect, their own uh, status in the society, how to be treated, how to be res to be respected by others, and these kinds of things are there. And they very easily are just outside in the world. If somebody if they have a need and if they go and if they ask them to just to, you know, to wait for two hours in the corridor, they don't mind. If they go to a minister, they don't uh, see him. Oh, no, no, they don't bother about it. But when they came here to Baba, their self-respect, their prestige, their status, all these things come. If they ask for interview, immediately it should be given. Otherwise, they feel offended. <laughs> and they should be treated in such a way their social stage has to be all to, you know, to be kept in mind. But actually it is the place where that one should not feel any self-respect. We don't have any respect at all here. No sense of prestige, no sense of status. And under no circumstances and by all these things to get offended. Here we have to give up all these things. But what we do is, we try to follow this here and give it up outside in the world. <laughs> there it doesn't matter, self-respect is not there. <laughs> then we take it when it we eat in the name of spirituality. As a Baba devotee, why should we feel like this? And then we go and stand before the minister's house for ten hours. But when we come here, we can't stay for half an hour in front of Baba's house. It is good to ask. Nothing wrong in asking for an interview. Absolutely nothing wrong in it. But asking only shows our desire, our love. And we should always know when it is exactly proper time, when it is needed, Baba will give. And before we get the interview, the result of the interview is the interview the view inside, the inside, the inside view, that is the real interview. Unless you have this insight, 
this interview has no meaning at all. It only enhances people's egos. Then it is it's not the place to fan people's egos. It's the place where we have to crush it. We have to see that it totally vanishes. You may feel the self-respect, the social stature, status, decency, decorum, all these things outside the world. But once you come to Bhava, you have to give up all these things. It doesn't apply here. Just as I told you, we always feel like the beggars in front of Baba's door. He himself showed himself being a king. He walked like a beggar in the streets of Shirdi. That feeling, that, that egolessness. Kabir said, the Ram ka moti ho. I am Ram's dog. That is how that he himself he compared himself. That is his, how he related himself to Baba, to his Ram. Just like a dog, just he has given just a biscuit, and it goes wagging his tail and always going round. <laughs> Maybe only a biscuit. Feel like. Never feel have these feelings of this ego or this man has spoken to me like this, that man offended me, this man was disrespectable. We should ignore these things. Why you have come here? Focus on them. And respect the ego. These things should not be there. I always feel like that. Whether you are in Shirdi or in Baba's, Baba's picture itself, that is the feeling you should get. కంప్లీట్స్ <laughs> We are like, think the analogy that I have given in many times in the Saksams, we are like an empty vessel. You know, you take bath in the vessel, an empty vessel. Tomorrow you, you experiment with it, with a, with a narrow uh, neck vessel. You try to put it straight tops it away, to the bucket. The, full, the bucket is full of water and try to put it upside down. Then the water will get into the uh, vessel. Yeah. Why? Because it is full of air. Yeah. The air obstructs it. Even if full push it <laughs> up to the bottom, no, not even a drop of water enters. Now, as Baba himself has said, you are all parts turned down. <laughs> Baba once said, ah, you are all parts turned down. You are all parts turned down. And we are in the ocean of Baba's grace. Tops it away, that we are just plunging. We go to Shirdi. We still move there, but the tops it away. What is there inside is this air. In our this gas. <laughs> full of gas. <laughs> just when you are pushing it down, just tilt it a little bit. Just one angle, one degree. Then you have the bubbles will go out. That one degree, the water will get in. Another one degree, more water, more and more. After a certain period, there is no need for you to turn because the pressure 
in, in the, 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 the air in the vessel, if it's more, the, the water pressure is more, then it takes away. And till then, the tilting should be there. And the moment that one degree is the, the air is gone out, the one degree of water will come inside. There is no question of waiting. Uh, now the air has gone, uh, shall we get it? And these bubbles which, come, which go out, they are the experiences that we have. That only shows that some gas has come. <laughs> these are the experiences. They come out of this, the grace. The grace always comes like this. There is no choice. It always, just like the water around the vessel, is striving hard, is trying, waiting to get inside the vessel. So Baba's grace is always trying around us to get into you. That we are not allowing it. Just tilt it. And that the tilting is the namaskar. I always feel that you are that vessel and that tilting is the namaskar. Just bending there. 